Hi guys, um, so in this second video here, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to be continuing on with another exercise based, uh, following on from the last video where we actually built this object here in Onshape. And this video is going to go a little bit quicker because we have done a basic introduction onto kind of some of the keys that we did on would use on the keyboard and some of the various buttons here we would use on the mouse. And uh, we also then you applied those kind of how we complete this first object here. So following on from that, what we're going to do is we're going to complete another object here. And this object, uh, I suppose, increases uh, in difficulty only ever so slightly because uh, we're actually going to have to make it in kind of two parts. OK, and I'll reference those parts later on by comparing it to the first object. OK, so as always, what we're going to do is we have to open up a website or open up on shape.com. So open up a tab, new tab here and type in on shape.com. That is going to bring me to the website where I should be able to log in. OK, so I have my account, so I'm going to go up here to sign in. <clears throat> Give that a second. Type my email and my password. Sign in. OK, now. Uh, the last day we went over this one here, it said object practice. The actual model is a little bit different from that one. It just probably hasn't been updated. So I'm actually going to click into this one again that we started with on the first uh, in the first video. So object practice, which is what I called it or whatever you called it yourself. And you can see here, this is what I've actually created. OK, so that's what we did in the last uh, in the last video. Now, uh, what I'm actually going to do is instead of actually if I just go back out here a second to on shape, OK, instead of actually creating a new object, OK, separate from this one, I'm going to do it inside here. Once again, you could create and you could create a new document and give it another name. You could call it maybe object practice two, but I'm actually going to stay inside in this one. And what I'm going to do is come down here and you'll see at the bottom here, I've got these various tabs. Part Studio 1, you can click on the assembly. There's nothing in an assembly at the moment. Uh, I can actually right click on that. So this is quite helpful here. It's another little trick. If you right click on that and you click delete, the assembly is gone. And all we're left with now is a Part Studio 1. OK, and that's really all we want. But what we want to do now is we want to create a new part. So if I wanted, I could rename that. If I right click on that and I click on left click on rename, and I'm just going to call it object one, like it is on the slides. Click anywhere on the screen. Now that is retitled object one. If I come over here to the plus and then click on create part studio once again, what's going to happen is I've got a new part that I can create in here. OK, my object one will be there and I can create a new part in here. Once again, I could rename that right click on it, select rename, and that could then be named object two. Okay, just to keep everything kind of neat and tidy based on our exercises that we're going to be doing over here. Okay, so once again, okay, just a quick recap on some of the things. If you hover over the center on the origin here, and if you scroll your wheel forward, that will zoom away. If you scroll your wheel back towards you, that will zoom in. Okay, very important when you're zooming in and zooming out that you're hovered over whatever object that you are creating. Okay, we got the viewing cube here. Okay, and if we click down, uh, if we press down the wheel button on the mouse, we can obviously rotate the object as well. Okay, if you ever want to get back to home, come over here to the kind of camera, camera and render options and select isometric, and it should bring you kind of back to where you want to be. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to model that object. So, object one is completed. I'm going to move on to object two. Now, in this object, what we're going to do is if we actually look at the object here, um, okay, once again, we have an elevation looking in the direction of arrow A. So if you imagine here, I'm going to see all of that L-like structure there. And I would also see this face right here. Okay. Now, the problem with this is in comparison to the last one, I was able to draw that in kind of one continuous path. Okay. And I was able to kind of start and down here, go up, down to the over to the right, down, right, up, right, down, right, down, and back left. And I brought it home. I was able to draw all of that in one. Now, the reason being is because that was all on one face. If I actually look at this object, I've kind of got the L-like structure here. And this other face, it's actually not joined onto that. It's actually a bit behind it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build, if you think of it like Lego, I'm going to build on this section first, and then I'm going to add on this section here. And I'm going to show you two ways we could do that. OK, so first of all, just look at it. It's 100 long and the height of it is 75. So these are 25 down 50 and up 25 just to give me an idea what my measurements are going to be. OK, so first things first, I have to select the plane to draw on. 
So I'm going to draw once again on the front plane. You can see it there. But I'm going to turn off my right plane. I'm going to turn off my top plane just to make things a little bit easier for me to understand. I'm going to select sketch. And now I'm going to select my front plane. But once again, this time I'll actually select it from here. The last time was in this one. If I select front, you'll see front goes in here. Now a sketch plane has come in parallel to that front plane. So I'm going to select front now. So I'm looking straight at it. Okay. And once again, we're going to go up to our line tool. Got all our drawing tools here. The ones we're practicing at the moment is just the line. So I'm select line. Now come down to the origin. And this time what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to start, uh, click on the origin, click and let go. So left click on the mouse and let go. And I can drag a line anywhere. This time I'm going to go up and I'm going to go left this time. Roughly just make a rough shape there. Click, click. You'll see here, should map to the home button. Click and click. There's my shape. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'll actually turn off the front plane now, just hide it, just so I just have my sketch plane there. Bring it back into view, so you might have to zoom in and zoom out. Now, that is the object generally done there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to my dimension tool, select it, and I'm going to dimension the length of the line here. So click on the line, let go, drag down, click. It's 100 long, 100, enter. Okay, you can see the object has changed, so I just zoom out so I can get it to fit into the screen. I want the overall height to be 75. Click, drag out, click. And now I want the height of this line to be 25. So click on the line, drag out, click again. Okay, and the last line I want to be 25 is this one. Click on this line, drag up, click, 25. Enter. Notice how the sketch has gone from fully blue to fully black. I'm going to go into the 3D option here. You don't have to, but just to uh, highlight it to us. There's the sketch. Now, like the last question, we're going to extrude that very quickly. Come back to my object. What's the width of that object? It's 75, so that's how far I'm going to extrude it. So I come up here to my extrude icon, select that, and I want to change it. The easiest way to do it is just select the depth here. 75, enter. Accept that with the green arrow. Okay. So there we have the object so far built up without that block here put into it. Okay. Now let's look at the dimensions of that block. It's in 25. It's 25 wide and then there's a gap of 25. So it's right in the middle. It's 25 on either side and 25 is actual width of it itself. And then it has a height of 25 as well. So it's like a little square. I could draw it there and then extrude it back. And there's two ways here. I'm going to show you both ways. Okay, so the first way, and I think probably the easiest way to do this, would be to select this surface, okay? So like we sketch, we need something else to draw on now. At the start, if you remember, we selected sketch and front, okay? What we're going to do is, I'm going to select this surface this time. I'm not going to select any of these, the front, the top, or the right. I'm going to select sketch, and this time I'm actually going to select a face. And this is going to allow me to draw on that surface face of extrude okay nothing wrong it is once again another flat surface and what you notice is another plane is after coming in there see that the plane has gone parallel with the face because that's like my sheet of paper is after been laid down on the face once again i want to look straight at that this time i want to look at the top of it so i'm looking at this face here now new tool we're actually going to go up to the rectangle tool here okay so i'm going to select you can see here i've got different options center point rectangle so forth i want to use the corner rectangle so what I want to do is I'm going to start. You can see here when I hover over this line, it's like an edge. OK, that's actually that top surface there. Go back to top and I want to start a rectangle about here. I want to start it on the line, not inside it, not inside it here on the line. So click, let go. You can see here I can draw a rectangle and I want to end it at the other end of the line. When it highlights orange, I know I'm on the line. Click. And there you have I'm going to a 3D view here. There I'm after drawing a sketch, okay, of a rectangle on the surface, okay? Now, what I want to do is I'm just going to go back to the top. I want to dimension that. So go up here to my dimension tool, select it. I want the distance between this line and this line to be 25. So if I select the line, you can see here it's saying the length of the line is 75. But then if I select this line, it gives me the space between two lines. And I want that to be 25. So I'll just drag that down. Ooh. If I can, there we go, just put it right into the middle. 
I also want the distance between this line and this line to be 25. So select the line, drag down, and then select the other line. Click. Then drag into the middle, 25, enter. Notice how my rectangle is now fully defined. It's fully dark. Okay? Really important. Okay? That cannot move now. Now, at this point, what do I want to do? I want to once again add. So this is going to be extrude. Now, notice how this time, okay, what we're actually going to do is we're going to add the material, okay? And I want it all to be part of the one object. So I'm going to merge it with the whole object, okay? It's all part. So I'm going to select merge with all, absolutely fine. How high do I want that to go? I want it to be up 25. But look, once again, you could grab it. You could bring it up to here. You could make it smaller. Absolutely fine. Oh, and once again, change your dimension over here. It wants it to be 25. Press enter and accept with the green arrow. Okay. There we go. There is the object created. Really, really easy. What I want to take note of Bob, now is if you actually look over here at our design tree, okay, I've got a little roll back bar here. If I click and hold that, watch this, and I hover, bring it above the extrude, notice how just the sketch is left. If I bring it above the sketch, there's no sketch there now. Then if I bring it above this, you can notice how we're just back to the original sketch. So it's like each stage of the object as it has been built. Because I had to do a sketch, then an extrude, and a sketch, and an extrude. Okay? Compare that to object one. Look at our, look at out here. We have a sketch, extrude, sketch, and extrude. In the object one, we had just a sketch and an extrude. Because I've made this in two parts, that's why there is kind of two sketches and two extrudes here. Now, another way I could have built that, and this is really helpful to you. You don't have to do it when you've done it at this point, but it's good to practice it. I'm actually going to delete what I've previously done here in these two sketches. So if I right click on my extrude, I can actually edit that or I can also delete it. If I wanted to go back in and change the height of that, I could right click and edit. Or once again, I could double left click and it'll bring me back in here and I can change the height. I want to delete it though. Right click, delete, left click. Now that's gone. I also want to delete my sketch. Right click on it, down to the bottom, left click on delete. Now we're back to this stage. So. As we did previously, we sketched on this surface, that orange surface there. Another way I could have done it was I could have sketched on this surface. Okay, so if I select sketch, then I select the surface I want to sketch on. There we go. Notice how this time a sheet of paper, it's called sketch two, is after coming in along parallel to this face. That's on the right face. So I actually need to come around here and select the right. So I'm drawing here. Once again, I'm actually going to start off with a corner rectangle, which is there. Select that. This time, I'm going to start by drawing here, roughly where I think just a little bit left the middle is. If that's the middle, it to the left. Click. Drag up to a position I think I'm happy with. Click. Notice how when I pan around to a 3D view, look at the sketch. It's on that face, but I'm actually sitting it directly above it. Now, I'm actually going to dimension. Okay. Sorry, I should have selected that. Between wire, well, sorry, between this line and this line now. So go up to my dimension tool. I'm going to select this edge. You can see it here at same height. I'm going to select this line because I want the space between those to be 25. I'm going to select this line. And this line. Once again, space 25. Now the last thing I have to do is I have to give it a height. The height here is already 25. So it knows that, but I need to give this line a height. Click on the line, drag out, 25. And notice how the sketch has gone from blue to black. Now, there's going to be something slightly different here, okay? So once again, we're going to extrude. So I go up here, extrude. I'm going to add, okay? Sorry, new, apologies. I'll stick with new, okay? Because it's actually coming off the top of line of the surface and notice how the actual line is going the arrow is going in this direction now i want it to go in the opposite direction so i can just pull it that way okay but if it ever is going in that direction if you come over here do you see where it says blind to the right of blind you got these arrows here and if you click on opposite direction it'll just go in the opposite direction what i want to do though instead of blind is i want to say instead of blind i want to say up to face and if I select up to face, now what it's asking me to do here when I select up to face is it's asking me a face that I want this square to con connect onto. 
And the face I want to select is this one. So if I select that face, you can see here what's after happening is that sketch of a square, 25 by 25, is after joining up to this face. Okay, now that I have that done, I'm going to accept it with a green arrow. What you'll notice is the object is after coming in slightly different colors this time in comparison to being, say, previously all blue. Okay, it's after coming in a different color. The reason being for that is when I actually did my sketch this time, okay, I did it off this face, but I did it off the top line. Okay, so it's like they actually recognize that it's a new material. Okay, whereas when I added it onto a face, then it's like it's part of the material. Because I did it off the edge, there was no original face that's connected onto it, so it comes in as a new material. Nothing wrong with the drawing. Okay, once again, absolutely fine. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of color to this once again. So I'm going to select this face. I'm going to right click on it, add appearance to face. I'm going to scroll with a red again. And another object I'm going to go red with is this one. Okay. I'm going to get the end elevation view. So I'm going to select this face, right click on it, add appearance to face. I'm going to go with a green. I'm going to add this one to be green and this one to be green. Happy with those, except those are the green arrow. And now the last ones, I'm going to go with a blue. Now what I could do is look, you could select all four faces. You can see how when I selected this face, because it's a different, because it's a solid object here. It's not just this part. When I select it here, the whole face selected. And then I'm going to select the top face, right click on it, add appearance to three faces. This time I will go with a, I'll go with a, not gray color, maybe something like that. And there we go. So when I look at the object from the front view, there we have it with the line split there. When I look at it from the bird's eye view, happy with that. And then when I look at it from the right view, kind of happy with that. Uh, when we're drawing this in autograph projection, there should not be a line going from this point to this point. Okay. And that is just simply on how I, uh, how I modeled it in SolidWorks or sorry, in uh, on shape. Okay. So that's the second video done there, guys. Uh, in that video, we kind of went over a little bit more on kind of maybe how we add on a part and uh, the different ways you could do that by using different faces. And then we also use the rectangle tool. Okay. So I hope you found that helpful, guys. You can have a little bit of fun there modeling that.